Welcome, everyone. We have two special guests today for our webinar. First, Marco Ruata, who is the chef at Osteria Tre Case in Serlunga d'Alba. Ciao, Marco. Ciao. And Sergio Germano, who many of you know. Sergio, ciao. Ciao, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Sergio is the proprietor of the Etare Germano Winery in Serlunga d'Alba. So we have two wine and food authorities from Serlunga today. And Sergio, let me just ask you, first of all, um, how is the weather right now? How is the growing season going? And, well, first of all, actually, let's toast that I just opened a glass of your Alta Longa. Okay, thank the, you. One of the great things about Sergio is that while he's an excellent producer of Barolo, which we'll talk about quite a bit today, he also produces many other wines, uh, Nascetta, Riesling, which is maybe his most famous wine, and then Alta Longa, and he's a big fan of that. So I'm tasting this today, celebrate. But um, we'll get into that in a minute. Let me, let me ask you about the growing season so far in 2020. How's everything been going? <clears throat> but 2020, um, there's, uh, it was a little bit uh, dry uh, in, and not very uh, cold in winter. Uh, the bud break was quite early. But after the, uh, the growing season was a little bit relaxed because the start uh, rain in uh, end March and April. And after we had quite a uh, good amount of rain in May and uh, to mid June. It was uh, uh, very good for the vineyard because we had a uh, great uh, to make. Uh, usually we make uh, the reserve of the water in the, in the ground with the snow, but this year we don't have, uh, we don't have the snow. But the rain uh, in spring uh, and uh, was uh, good to re remade the reserve. For uh, I think now we don't have we don't need more rain until the harvest time because uh, our 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 soil keep a good amount of uh, of uh, water because the texture is very fine and uh, we don't have uh, any uh, evaporation. Or it's quite easy to to keep the, the humidity uh, from mid June to now is a uh, good dry. And uh, the growing was regular, uh, even because the water is, is inside the, the, the soil. And uh, we have a great potential for a, a complete and a well uh, mood of uh, maturation of the, of the grape. We have a few berries to uh, find in Dolcetto, the mostly uh, early grape variety uh, we have. Uh, we, see, we see some uh, berries with the raison, just the beginning, the last okay. week. Right. So but uh, pro the, the idea is a regular, normal uh, <coughs> wind, uh, season. Is, uh, the promise is good, the health of the grape is good, and we are optimistic for the rest okay. of the time. We, we, the we can all use uh, as much good news as possible, right? So Yeah, absolutely. We need good news this year because we had so yeah. bad so yeah, many good news. Everybody. So, Marco, let me talk to you about the um, your business at the restaurant. Obviously, it's been a tough several months with the, with the coronavirus, but you are not, now reopened again, right? Yeah, you are returning for the normal tie of uh, for the tourists in the Saralunga. Uh, you open for the next uh, month for, for the, the festival of the white truffle. Uh, this is for the, the August and uh, July and August is the return of the tourist. Uh, I hope for the drink and the Barolo. Eh? Sardo. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Uh, I can imagine this year you probably need the tourists more than ever, right? But I think uh, we, I, Marco can, uh, can confirm or not, but I think we have uh, more uh, people than what we can expect uh, after this uh, strange period uh, after end May. Uh, is, I'm surprised to see so many people to, to restart to travel to, to visit us. I think also for Marco it's the same. Yeah. This is a good surprise. It's a normality. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? No, no, yeah. um, is it the re tourism and normality for the, the tourists in the travel? Uh, uh, for the 
they know the second lockdown, okay, is the return of normality. Salunga is very uh, the tourist in the North Europe. Uh, uh, I return uh, the uh, Danish, uh, is uh, Spanish, uh, is French. Uh, my friends in uh, uh, Germany is return. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I prefer the tour. Yeah. Well, 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 hopefully, those of us that live in the United States can come over very soon. I, hopefully, I, yes. yes. Yeah, I, I wonder because it's like, you know, we have many coronavirus cases, not where I live in Illinois, but in other states like California and Texas and Arizona and Florida. And it's, I'm sure the EU is going to look at that. But on the other hand, I'm sure they want Americans to come over and with their dollars and spend money. So it's, It'd be an interesting decision, but I, I, I feel like I uh, am going through withdrawal here. I haven't been to Piemonte for 10 months, so it's, it's time to get back. But anyway, yeah. exactly. let's talk a little bit. Marco, I'll get back to you and talk to you more about the restaurant a little bit. Sergio, I mentioned you're an excellent producer of Barolo, but you produce so many wines, and, which is great. And the first one we're going to talk about, I mentioned I opened a glass, is your Alta Langa. We have a bottle of here, which I just opened up. No. And if you could just tell us about Alta Langa in general and about your specific bottling of Alta Langa. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. As, as you told, uh, I'm uh, mainly in the, from the beginning barrel producer. But uh, by the way, I increased my uh, passion about uh, white and sparkling because I always had this passion and I was uh, all, a little bit scared to try in the beginning, but after. The first was uh, the steel white, uh, and after the Alta Langa, obviously the grape growth uh, in high elevation outside Barolo area. Uh, I was one of the first to start to grow uh, white varieties in Alta Langa. And uh, when uh, the Alta Langa appellation was uh, to start in the market, I was fascinated and I, I decided to try to make Alta Langa too. Uh, Alta Langa is an appellation for sparkling champenois method uh, with uh, inspiration uh, champagne protocol, like uh, uh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Because we have to say, Piedmont is one of the oldest producers of sparkling champenois in Italy, but it is the last to have an appellation. Because really? the other area like Francia Corta, Oltrepo, Trento, Alto Adige, they had uh, uh, many time ago the appellation uh, for sparkling. And Piedmont maybe forget this because he had uh, too many uh, sort of wine to, to be focused. But uh, in, in 1990, uh, some producer, the big, uh, they were historical winery to make uh, uh, sparkling champagne, decided to um, prepare uh, to uh, make an appellation. And this is a big area because Alta Langa is an uh, old South Piedmont from uh, the borderline from uh, uh, France to Piedmont, like uh, Provincia di Cuneo, uh, Ceva, and after is all the Alta Langa uh, from Cuneo area, and after Alta Langa from Asti area, and join part of Alessandria. It's quite a big area, is 142 small villages in this and now the total uh, surface is almost 350 hectare almost uh, 1000 acre uh, of alta langa and where, uh, where are your where are your vineyards located my vineyard is in uh, the mostly south uh, west, uh, southeast area uh, near uh, more near france border we are in Chilie. Chilie is uh, the borderline of la the last village of uh, Dolcetto di Dogliani. And after the, the Taro River uh, separate the Dogliani area from the mountain to separate Piedmont to Liguria. And uh, this is very high area, is uh, between five to six hundred meters. We can say uh, 16 to uh, 1600 to 2000 feet in elevation okay. with the soil. Typically, the character of Alta Langa terroir is altitude and the soil, because the Alta Langa 
is uh, opposite than Lower Langa. Lower Langa is the historical area to, uh, for the make wine. The wine area in, in, uh, in Langa was the Lower Langa, Marolo, Barbaresco, and all around these two uh, areas. Alta Langa in the past was the poor area because it was too high, too cold. It was mostly hazelnut, uh, sheep, cow, goat, uh, chestnut, it was really poor. Okay. But the soil in this area is interest, interesting to grow white and white to make sparkling because the soil uh, in uh, Lower Langa is very uh, rich in clay and calcium, no stony. In Alta Langa, we have a lot of stone, more sand, and low quantity of calcare. For this reason, uh, we have a wine with, with a more lean, uh, more uh, slim body, more finesse, more saltness, more acidity, and this is perfect to make white and sparkling. It, it's, this area is Alta Langa, so it's higher in elevation, as you said. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's much cooler than where you're at in Sierra Lunga, correct? Exactly, it's uh, cooler because Serra Lunga, the top of Serra Lunga is 400 uh, meters, 420 meters. Uh, Alta Langa starts to 500 to 600, 700 meters. And after 400, the 400 is almost 430, is the limit where it's possible to grow Nebbiolo with good result. After means the, change, the, the climate change very uh, consistency. And this is what make possible to have more freshness, more acidity, more finesse for wine, for grape variety to make white wine or sparkling because they keep more acidity, more minerality, more saltness. We are also more in the south. We are more close to the Ligurian Sea. And also the wind from this area is very helpful okay. to have more saltness. Okay. Well, I like your description of finesse and, and the wine being sleek because I'm tasting it now and it, it, it definitely has those qualities to it. It's a very elegant <clears throat> Sparkling wine. Marco, let me ask you, if I came in and ordered a bottle of, of uh, Sergio Saltalanga at your restaurant at the Osteria, what, tell me, tell me several things that you would, would pair the wine with. What do you think is the best food option to pair with the Altalanga? Yeah, the Altalanga is very perfect for the, the, the cuisine for the Piemont style, for the uh, Piemont for the uh, August for the fish uh, and the traditional dishes of Piemont uh, of the meat, the raw meat uh, and uh, different detiring uh, uh, and, um, and the uh, aperitif uh, is very nice. Is the uh, uh, one wine for uh, on only dish is the start and the second and the dessert is this, perfect. This could really work with a lot of things, right? Because that the, uh, the Alta Lunga could really match with a lot of foods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let, let me, while I'm talking to you, let's talk a little bit about the Osteria. Now, you opened up in 2016, is that correct? 16. Okay. Are, are you, now, are you from Sierra Lunga? Uh, yeah, is, uh, this is moment is uh, you are from uh, Saralunga. Okay, I'm going to put up a picture here. This is off your website. I don't have a picture myself, but and it's at nighttime, but it's yeah. it's right behind the castle. If people know yeah, Saralunga, yeah. the turn, uh, one, uh, one ring uh, in the uh, the Saralunga of the castle. Right. The center town Saralunga. The and, old the, town. And, and the name Osteria Trecase means three houses. Three so, houses. Why is three parts in this house? One, two, three. Okay, and Sergio, you told me you used to live in one of those houses, is that correct? Yes, it's just in here. I was born uh, just in front of this. In front of this is another building, and uh, it's fantastic. I really appreciate uh, these people restore uh, this house because it was three houses, because it was three different owners, and they both all together and they restored. And uh, it was, uh, yeah. For a long time, from when I was born, it was a very uh, decorated houses, and thankfully uh, they 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 did incredible work to don't change the face because it's really traditional, but remove inside in a fantastic mood. And uh, I'm really grateful to have uh, this just in front of my uh, other house where I was born to have uh, uh, this. Uh, 
very nice restaurant. The, the fantastic is the very intimate. Uh, you can have uh, the atmosphere, and if you go outside the door, outside the, uh, the the window, you have the castle just in front of you, like a big tower. Yes, yeah, it's a fantastic machinery. Here's a here's a photo of the, in, the uh, dining room. This is on the second floor, correct, Marco? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and um, I, I I love the look of this. I think a lot of people when they travel, they expect in whether it's in Piemonte or Toscana or anywhere in Italy, you know, the traditional Italian restaurant is going to be kind of dark and not very bright, you know, kind of old old world style. And this is obviously, you know, very bright, very clean, beautifully designed. So. Um, and just from the one time I was there, I enjoyed it very much. It, how has the press been, you know, the reviews from the local uh, critics and the critics all over Italy? Have you received a lot of great press? Mark, Mark, did, you, did you hear my question? Yeah. Hey, you repeat, sorry. Yeah, I, I, w I was just wondering about the, the reaction from the, not only the press, but also the, the, the local, uh, the people that live in the area and also the tourists. What, what is their reaction yeah, yeah, to the yeah. restaurant? The local, the local tourists, the local Italian, the Tuscany, is the uh, Lombardy, is the, we all uh, the tourists for the Italy. Is there a tour, the tourists to Italy, the uh, poor lockdown, is, uh, is the beautiful Italian people for the return in the restaurant. Uh, I hope for the return for the tourists in the world. The last, uh, the last year is uh, uh, the world in this restaurant. It's the very nationality, uh, ASEAN, America, uh, North Europe. Uh, it is uh, one return for the the new year, I hope. Okay, I'm going to put up a picture of one of your primi. If you could tell me about this, this is the famous Agnolotti del Plin, which looks absolutely great. Tell us about. I, I, know, I don't know about this, about this dish, and tell me also about your other, your other dishes on your menu, what you specialize in. Is a. The menu is the casa is the two part is the uh, traditional and the modern. Is the traditional for the uh, the dishes uh, tagliarin, agnolotti al plin, uh, vitello tonnato, carne cruda. The second part of this menu Stretri casa is uh, the tasting the new dish when the fish uh, and. Uh, for the um, the new the um, the very important for the the people for the tourists uh, I hope for the battuta tiring uh, and panna cotta and okay. the right. the local the local people is the new dish is no uh, traditional or maybe um, one menu for everybody okay. And this dish, this photo of the Agnolotti del Plin, what is it? Looks no, this is uh, tortelli, tortelli with uh, burrata and yeah. tomato. And tomato, okay. I said yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, tortelli, I'm sorry. It looks, it looks terrific. So <laughs> next time I'm there, I'll have to try that. So I agree. Back to Sergio, <laughs> and in the same area where you have your vineyards of Altalanga, you make this absolutely terrific Riesling, which may be the best Riesling in Italy. It's Ezzu. Yes. 2018 vintage. Tell us about, first of all, why do you produce Riesling? A lot of people don't associate uh, Piemonte with Riesling. But. The answer is quite easy because uh, Riesling is uh, my best white wine, my favorite uh, white wine. I, when I start to travel in the Europe uh, to promote my first bottle of wine uh, 25 years ago, 20 years ago, it was mainly Germany and Austria. And it was easy. Uh, to find uh, this wine, and I was uh, fascinated from uh, from uh, the reasoning I tried from uh, Austria, from Germany, and uh, when I decided uh, in the beginning of my life of winemaker to add to my traditional uh, 
line up Barolo, De Biolo, Dolcetto, Barbera to try to make a white. And my dream was to make a, an awfully an interesting white in typical area for red. And uh, of course, I tried to grow my favorite gray variety, like uh, Chardonnay a little bit uh, in the beginning. And after when I tried Riesling, I decided to try to grow Riesling. And I started in 1997 in Alta Langa to do the, my, the first plantation was in 1995 in Sierra Luga, just 300 wine. And after when I had the possibility to plant uh, in Alta Langa in 1997, I started to do my first uh, vineyard in Alta Langa, uh, two acres, one in Riesling and one in Chardonnay. Uh, Riesling for me is uh, the mostly complex. I call uh, the Riesling, I call the white Barolo because he has a, uh, possibility to drink quite young, it's possible to age 20 years, he have a continuous evolution with a fantastic potential to keep the freshness and uh, uh, for me is intriguing like Barolo, in the, obviously two different sides but he has the same uh, uh, character to surprise the people who drink because when he's young he is the mostly fruit and flower, when he's old he has a complexity and uh, the acidity is long finished. I just today finished to plan my trip in Mosel uh, the first week of August uh, to visit uh, five or, or six uh, different wineries uh, from Mosel because I'm really- That sounds ready. great. And, and that's, yeah. that's what you, you modeled your recently after is uh, Mosel. I try to do my best, of course. I try to understand. I like uh, mainly dry Riesling uh, because uh, I think uh, our, philosophy, our tradition in Piedmont is to drink wine with food. As to Marco told with the fantastic dishes he made, uh, like a part traditional and part a little bit uh, more with creativity and a little bit more modern interpretation of uh, uh, Piedmontese food, uh, a little bit fusion also with other regions. I think it's important uh, to make uh, the combination because the Piedmontese people always drink wine with food. And for this reason, uh, for, to drink and to pair the wine with food is important to have a dry wine with a great uh, long finish uh, to clean up the mouth. And this uh, is what I like to make in my wine in general. But I like the acidity, the crisp minerality, the saltness in uh, <clears throat> the Riesling. And this is what uh, I try to, to do in my wine. Well, I'm you... happy you told the best. Uh, I think not the best, but I hope to be in between the most representative reason from Italy, of course. Uh, you, you definitely are, and, and you're, you're right up there with the absolute best. And I know people in recent in Italy, but there's some outstanding examples. So, Marco, uh, if I came to the restaurant and they had a bottle of Sergio's Etzu Riesling, what would you recommend with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You recommend it. Very, only for the, the dish, for the, uh, the Altalanga and the Riesling and the, the oh. Erzu. Uh, quali piatti, quali piatti suggerisci? No. For, um, uh, for the Riesling, for the uh, Versatility, for uh, the um, Vitello Tornato, it's okay. very, it's perfect. Because it's too clean. Uh, and for the uh, the fish and the uh, the shrimps with the uh, the, the tayarin with the black truffle is the the July is the rim from the black truffle the the local truffle. Okay, right. the name is Corzone. Uh, is uh, is perfect for the abin. As far as the wines you sell at the restaurant, in terms of, obviously, I'm sure a lot of people order Barolo, but what about whites like Riesling, or what about a sparkling like Altalanga? Do you, do you sell much of that? Yeah. Do you, do you sell many bottles of Riesling in Altalanga? Yeah, for, for Altalanga, yeah. Good, okay. Sergio, let's talk a little bit about Barolo. You make quite a few. And let's start with the 2016. And by the way, your importer in Chicago, Paolo Ceruti, just joined us. So, ciao, Paolo. Yeah, 
Uh, Paulo, I don't know, but uh, he, he, sent, he sent me a text. Uh, uh, okay, now now he's joining us. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. because he, he he sent me a message uh, uh, to have a difficult to to collect connect with the Zoom. Okay. And now I'm happy he joined us. Fantastic. Yeah, Paolo is our distributor, our importer, and distributor in Illinois. Uh, he is a manly good friend and good passionate uh, wine, and I'm very thankful to him to support us. Absolutamente. He's a good friend to me too, and I know he's from Piemonte and went to school in Barolo, so yeah, he exactly. knows the area and your wines very well. So it is originally from Roero, but he has a good conversion to the Barolo. Oh, wine. okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, let's talk about your current releases from 2016. You have a Comune de Serlunga d'Alba Barolo. You have yeah. We have uh, our our wine, our estate is uh, made uh, between uh, 20 hectares. 10 hectares is in Alta Langa where we grow just the white varieties, and 10 hectares is in Serlunga. Okay. I'm gonna put up, I'm gonna put up a picture here of your new winery. Yes. Uh, and this is uh, one of the crew, one of the MGA we have. Uh, the winery is located in Prapo. Prapo, see? Si. Uh, we own uh, our estate is located in spread out in four different uh, uh, vineyards. Is uh, Prapo, Cerretta is the main uh, uh, crew for us. is almost six hectares. Prapo yeah. is almost two hectares. Uh, Lazzarito is almost one hectare. Vigna Rionda is almost a little bit less than half hectare. And after we have also another hectare and after to make some Lange Nebbiolo, some Barolo di Saralunga. Uh, and we are very, very proud to have all our uh, estates insert in this four single, in four crew, in, four, in this uh, four uh, MGA. And this is very, uh, also challenging for us to try to make a different character to feel the different character because the, the soil is <clears throat> changed a little bit. We can feel the character of Saralunga, powerful, full body, hearty taste, more uh, Thai body, but uh, it's fantastic to feel the difference between Charetta, the mostly limestone, no sand, high concentration in calcare, uh, Prapo with some little uh, small uh, layer of uh, fine sand. Lazzarito, very high concentration in calcare like Saralunga, but with some more strong texture of the few uh, sedimentation of sand. And Vigna Rionda is almost a blend of mix of everyone. Here's the uh, photo of Lazzarito. Yeah, we are the border. This is Lazzarito. We are just a. Uh, in the right part of the photo. Okay. Uh, Lazzari, uh, we have to say, Saralunga is a long hill to run from north to south. And we have almost 50% of the uh, crew in southeast exposure, as some crew is southwest exposure. The southeast is like Charetta and Prapo, the mostly uh, cold because uh, they have the sun from the morning but after when the 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 sun is very hot in the afternoon the leaves and the hill make a little bit protection and uh, southwest is much more warm like uh, lazzarito like vigna rionda okay. uh, they are more sunny they are more early for the harvest <clears throat> but they have also the texture much more in finesse side Prapo uh, charetta is more in power side Let's let's start with the 2016, and which I tasted last night. And um, first, before I tell people about the wines, what I thought, tell me about 2016 because it, it certainly is a, an outstanding vintage. 16 is uh, yeah, it's considered one of the mostly important vintage in terms of quality because, uh, like Tang, uh, like 13, uh, also like 16, they are. They was good everywhere. Every producer had the chance to make a fantastic wine because you know we are in the area. The microclimate is very important. Sometimes in some vintages, some ill, some village make more complexity. Someone have some more problem. In this year, 
we, everyone can make a fantastic wine. It was a perfect uh, growing season, not too humid, not too early. It was late maturation. We finished to harvest in the uh, second end of October. Okay. Uh, this is fantastic to develop the character of the, the grape variety uh, mm -hmm. and also to, have, to refine the quality of the tannin. More is slowly as a late time to harvest the viola, more is uh, good to have a complexity. And 2016 was in this way. Even, I have to say, in Serra Lunga, we are in high elevation. And also in vintages a little bit more warm, like 17, like 15, we can have also very good result because the altitude of Serralunga and the Thai soil, calcareous soil, make a good balance for the temperature. Because in this in this terroir, historically, it was very difficult to have a perfect maturation because the temperature and the soil. Now with global warming, we are very very uh, happy. We are. Uh, lucky to have a possibility every year to have a great maturation but 16 was perfection between freshness maturation roundness and long finish what i said even in barolo because we have a good potential of power in our terroir my goal is to find the elegance the finesse right the reason why i do in all all uh, selection long maturation of the skin and for to do this, we have to harvest the grape very, very ripe. Low maturation of the skin is a uh, minimum is 30 days okay. for Serrunga Barolo to 40, 50 for Charetta Prapo. It is a long time, Lunga. yes. And Lazzarito sometimes is also 60 days. Ah, okay. It's extremely long because we have to extract the complexity from the skin and, and the seed, not only the color and the tanning. And in this time, the, the wine start to involve start uh, the after 20 days of maturation we have the maximum quantity of tannin but after the tannin start to polymerize and to become more round and this is very very uh, intriguing to make uh, complex and round well i i taste first of all i it's nice to hear you say that about the climate change because a lot of people think well it's just getting worse and worse and the harvests are getting riper and you know, in 17, okay, that was an exception, but 2016 was a warm vintage, and yet you made such lovely, you and all the producers made such elegant wines. I see, I think 17 will be surprising uh, from some villages, uh, okay. for many of you. Okay. Well, as far as the 16, and the thing I noticed, I've tasted almost 100 different uh, MGA wines now from 16, yeah. is how approachable they are. And I, I noted this last night. This is the... Um, the Ceretta, and I don't know if you can tell on the screen, but I mean, it's got a beautiful, delicate garnet color to it. And instead of getting the usual, you know, cherry, I got aromas like strawberry and red currant and even some carnation. I mean, just beautiful wine and it, the tannins are silky. This is, and I'm not saying this because I'm trying to win some points here, but this is the best Ceretta I've had from you ever. It is so beautifully elegant. It's approachable right now. You could drink this tonight and yet it'll hold for 12 or 15 years easily. Yeah, uh, this wine for me is also the most representative for my winery because Charetta is the older property of my family. Okay. We own this part of this Charetta from uh, 150 years and uh, it's in my art for the, <clears throat> for the history but also for the character because it's the real Serralunga. It's the one of the mostly powerful wine in my lineup. But this is what I said. I'm glad if you uh, feel the elegance and the great explosion of the nose. I think is uh, because in the last uh, 10 years, we try every year to increase the personality of this wine with long maturation to, uh, and uh, very, very careful winemaking. And this is uh, really, really surprising for me to have. Uh, I, I'm very happy to, to find your, your comments in this oh, way. Yeah. Because Charetta is always full body, but you have also a lot of tanning. But in this way, if the tanning are in good quality, they can be very silky and balanced with, with the... Uh, it can, can balance to, to make around the tanning of the wine. And for this reason, it looks like big, but drinkable. Yeah, I, I, 
just to contrast it with the propos, and I normally joke with you that I prefer the, I prefer the propos, but this year I prefer the Ceretta, but they're both lovely wines, but that is going to need a little more time, the propos. Yeah, propos need more time because propos, he has a little sand in the soil, and the sand makes the body a little bit less in intensity, and the, the tanning, you can feel more the tanning. In Ceretta, we have more tanning if we do chemical analysis, but they, you don't feel the tanning because the, the, the richness of the wine from the soil combine with the, with the tanning and make uh, the sensation more round. This is uh, the, the, the character of this wine. Okay. Uh, Pablo left a note here. He said 2006 was also great vintage. Which I, I agree. Think. 2006 was uh, not a very strong and powerful vintage. Yeah. Powerful yeah. exactly needs a lot of time. And I, I love 2000, I, 2008 as well. To me, it was yeah. so classic Piemontese. I'm proud to have some, uh, some bottle for sale of 2006 in my cellar. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, then let's talk about... I, I have to show to Marco to increase the, 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 the wine list with some more old vintages <laughs> in the restaurant. All right. Because it's young, you need more uh, old vintages in, in the wine list. Absolutamente, sí. And uh, Paulo says, how about 1999? Uh, 99 was uh, good, absolutely good, but uh, I think uh, in terms of power, the power was uh, more than finesse. They are good wine, but is sometimes too rich, too strong. Uh, we can say bad wine, but if we consider the finesse, uh, the elegance, 99 was a little bit more strong, more uh, okay. right. over extractive for um, okay. some situation. Well, let's talk about both Vina Rionda and then this is a new wine, 2015 uh -huh. Barolo. I know in 2014, your Vina Rionda was at Lange Nebbiolo. Yes. And now you make it a Barolo. So what, is it just, well, was, was it just the vines are a little bit older and that you felt it was better to make yeah, it? Yeah, uh, 2014 was the first harvest. The vineyard was planted in 2012. Okay. And uh, 2014 was just uh, the third year is a uh, good but i think uh, if we write vignarion on the label people expect the maximum from barolo and i i, I decide to respect the vineyard more and to say we can make the same way making the barolo but we call langen from 2015 i take the wine and i say we can try to do vignarion because uh, one year more more careful uh, and I think the wine can be interesting. I don't know if you taste this wine or not. I haven't uh, tasted it yet, no. Sorry? Not, not, non ancora, not yet. Not ancora. Okay. But uh, is uh, because the vineyard is very sunny. It's one of the mostly uh, exposed uh, to the sun, more the sunny in the history. And this is why it is popular because even 40, 50 years ago when the climate was colder, right. Vignard Rondos was one of the vineyard with more potential to have great maturation every year. Okay. And for this reason, I'm a little bit scared now about the two color of this figure. And uh, for this reason, I decided to try to make the, the wine uh, with uh, anterior grape, not anterior grape, without the stem in the grape, with all cluster, just to crash the grape, but not the stem, to have also the complexity of the, the stem, to add and to keep the freshness in the wine. And this, uh, also the Lange Nebbiolo 14, but also this one, and all the Vignarionda from us is made with uh, all cluster grape. Okay, and, and tell me about that vintage very quickly, 2015. Sorry? Ah, uh, the vintage? Yes, 2015. 15 was uh, a little bit opposite than uh, 16. 16 was fresher, long uh, uh, maturation, late maturation. Uh, 15 was a little bit warmer, but uh, as I told before, uh, we harvest uh, just the beginning of October, not in the second half of October, but <clears throat> the, the color was not too much. It was just enough to have a great maturation. Uh, thankful for the altitude, uh, the wine is quite approachable even now, but uh, with a, an incredible concentration in fruit and flower. And for me, it's a wine to be drinkable now, but also possible to, to age for uh, other 20 or more years. Okay, 
one more Barolo and then we'll go back to Marco. So I don't want to yeah. leave you alone there for too long, Marco. So this would be the, your Reserva Barolo from Lazzarito, which has just been released from the 2014 vintage. So yeah. we could talk about, I know Lazzarito and Vino Rionda are at different ends of the commune of, of Sedalunga, if you could yeah. talk about those two vineyards and also talk about 2014 vintage. Lazzarito for us in our lineup is the mostly Burgundy expression because of the little sand we have in the soil give more uh, lean, uh, more finesse, more, uh, the body is much more elegant. You don't have a lot of uh, full body, but uh, <clears throat> we have a fantastic long finish and minerality. Minerality because the sand we have in, uh, in Lazzarito, he has the, the texture is a little bit stronger than Prapo, for example, and also is an irony. And even it is uh, the iron helped to make a more, a uh, little bit bloody, little more mineral tasting Lazzarito. Uh, and uh, this is the reason why I call the wine with double personality, because he has very, sweet and uh, fine, elegant uh, beginning of the mouth, but after the tanning is very strong in the end. It's the reason why I decided to make Reserva for this wine and to uh, age two years more than regular Barolo. Okay. This is the reason why this year we show the 16 regular Barolo. Uh, for Vignarionda we decided to do one more year, but without to call Reserva. Okay. And for Lazzarito we call Reserva. Uh, 14 is the last vintage available now, and it was a difficult vintage, but it was challenging also because the wine grower to work very hard and with the vineyard with a great potential of quality was challenging to try to make wine. And uh, I think 14 for me, uh, the Lazzarito is one of my favorite uh, Lazzarito in terms of complexity, minerality, and uh, elegance in the wine. Okay, I, I've been telling people since I tried the wines two years ago that 2014 is a very underrated vintage. And yeah, it's a... It came out after the, 13 and people read that, you know, there was rain and there was hail. Well, it wasn't everywhere and, and the wines, yeah. not, it's not the most powerful vintage, but it's it's beautiful structure, beautiful acidity. And some other producers, your colleagues told me, that, you know, it was cooler, but that's good for Nebbiolo. I mean, you, you bring out the acidity, you bring out the aromatics. Is, is, I think, one of the vintages with that. Uh, obviously, it was difficult because somewhere people had the hell, people had the storm. Uh, is, is the microclimate, is the most representative situation where the microclimate can make different character. But where, where the people was lucky to don't have any storm and any hell, it was a good place to grow. Uh, some 14, uh, you know, some excellent producer, or maybe the most popular and most expensive uh, Barolo we know. Uh, on the market was it is made in the in 2014. Interesting. Okay. And this is the reason why I try to make also my small portion of Lazzarito, and uh, I believe this wine can give to the wine enthusiast uh, uh, people and uh, with the, the really passionate wine can can take some uh, great uh, uh, sensation. How many bottles of this wine did you produce? This wine is also 3,000 bottles. Usually I make 6,000. This one, I make only 3,000. Okay, and of the Prapo and the Charetta, how many bottles? Prapo in 14, I made uh, 4,000, Charetta 6,000. Okay. In 14, and the rest, uh, I make, oh, I blend all in the Saralunga Barolo, because Barolo de Sal Comune de Saralunga is our entry level Barolo. Uh, it is blend between Charetta, Prapo, and uh, Little Bit Lazzarito. With the younger plantation, uh, the, the vineyard, younger than 15, 20, 15 years. And we do the single vineyard with uh, 40, 50, 80 years old uh, plots. Marco, for Barolo, especially Sergio Germano Barolo, but for Barolo in general, what, what are your favorite plates with, uh, on, on, on your Barolo. menu that you recommend to people? This Barolo is uh, the, word, the one word of the wine. Very the uh, it's not one prefer it's a different uh, different uh, where the 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 dishes or for the uh, the day the day the 
the temperature, uh, the season. Uh, Sagalunga, I, I love Sagalunga for the, the Barolo. We are the, for the testing, the more, uh, the, the strong for the, the intensity, quality, and the, the different, uh, so the, 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 the terroir different. Uh, 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 the, uh, the, 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 che possiamo partire da, da un dolcetto a finire un barolo, perché la cucina piemontese così è versatile eh, a, a fiumi, a laghi e quindi possiamo entrare con, del, con la carne, con il pesce e la stessa cosa è l'equivalente col barolo. Eh, possiamo abbinare eh, tranquillamente uno strapotto, quindi una carne grassa, mh, ha una, questa untuosità, eh, che va molto, si lega molto bene con il tannino del Barolo che è astringente e questo permette di avere un, un, un contrasto che eh, consente di, di apprezzare ancora di più il Barolo. Però allo stesso tempo può essere anche abbinato anche a un salume, un bel un, un affettato. Qua la langa ne è piena di questi di questi pionieri che hanno cominciato a, a far capire che un salume, eh, anche solo un piatto di salume, può essere un, un gran piatto. Poi ancora abbinato a un grande vino, specialmente come questi di Sera Lunga, dove questo tannino è forte e ha, un, ha una sua intensità, in bocca persista, questa persistenza molto intensa, eh, fa sì che anche con piatto classico, anche solo con un salume, possiamo avere un, un grande piatto abbinato a un vino. Ok. Sergio, let's see how I did on translation, but I'll start and you can finish. But I know we started by saying that the, the, the cuisine of uh, the different wines of Piemonte, ranging from Dolcetto to Barolo, you know, it works beautifully with Piemontese cuisine. And it, it, these, his, his dishes can work with anything from fish from the sea to, to meats, to things like that. So, do you want to finish the rest? No, I, I agree <coughs> for uh, this because uh, we have uh, a lot of choice and also with creativity like Marco, it's possible to have uh, uh, to adapt uh, many wine for uh, uh, many dishes. Uh, of course, uh, another, uh, just uh, what I like to add is uh, obviously Stracotto is the history of uh, Barolo pairing. And uh, I agree in this way, but I think today, just because the climate change and also like uh, uh, Marco make uh, fantastic uh, pork chops uh, or uh, lamb chops, uh, I think is the best event. If it's a little bit uh, more uh, rare cooked uh, veal, veal steak, is also very, very enjoyable with Barolo. Yeah. And we have more freshness of the meat without too many spices. It is a fantastic, just important uh, kind of cooking of this. Uh, uh, I really like too with Barolo. Well, my, my favorite dish over the years with Barolo has been Conidio, which I just think is great. It's another dish, very traditional, very popular. It, yeah. <clears throat> it's difficult to find a good Conidio, uh, well made, but uh, <clears throat> Marco is one of the, <clears throat> of the professor of the Conidio. So. All right. Allora, Marco, una domanda in italiano. Va bene? Sì. Ok. Quali annate di Barolo ti piacciono di più nel ristorante e perché? Allora, eh, ovviamente la, la 2016, eh, ne stanno parlando tutti benissimo. C'è questa quest annata pazzesca, fantastica, con profondità. Sarà un'annata che durerà nel tempo, eh, perché, come diceva prima Sergio, ha, ha potenza, ha evoluzione. Eh, 
questa annata per me è importante perché è l'annata che Osteria Tre Case è nata e quindi sono due connubi fantastici. Sia l'anno che Osteria Tre Case è partita e automaticamente è stata un'annata super sia per i vini che anche per me stesso che ho fatto partire. Abbiamo fatto un partire un progetto di lavoro in un in un paese che ci ha accolto benissimo. Quindi tutte e, due, tutte e due le cose sono di mio gradimento. Poi ovviamente eh, la 10, eh, un'altra annata super, un'altra annata fantastica, un'annata da, da bere ovviamente, ma anche da lasciare qualche bottiglia lì. E anche, se posso dire una cosa, la 14, anche se... Non tutti la pensano, eh, a mio parere, a, co, come me. Si era lunga facendo delle prove, facendo delle degustazioni alla cieca, anche con produttori locali. Eh, abbiamo visto che è una bella annata. Si era lunga, nel, anche nel 2014, ha sviluppato eh, un, un bel naso, un, un, una bella intensità. Eh, che poi sono convinto che chi lavora bene in cantina il vino è sempre, cioè, è, fa sempre un bel vino. Qua i produttori eh, sono tutti, ci sono degli ottimi produttori a Serra Lunga e quindi sono, sono molto orgoglioso di avere il mio lavoro, la, la mia vita qua a Serra Lunga eh, perché un, un bel piatto diventa un, un eccellente piatto se vicino c'è un, un eccellente vino. Le due cose vanno insieme. Se uno dei due manca, eh, ovviamente il piatto resta un bel piatto, il vino resta un bellissimo vino, però insieme si crea una magia, eh, un, un fattore che, eh, che secondo me diventerà sempre di più eh, presente nella nostra vita. Un bel piatto, un bel vino, noi ci mettiamo il sorriso e queste, questo tris di, di elementi fa permettere che di passare una bella serata o anche solo, non solo nel mio ristorante, ma anche a casa, di trascorrere una super serata con un ricordo, con un ricordo di queste tre cose qua. Se una delle due cose, specialmente il piatto o il bicchiere, non sono insieme, non sono compatibili, non sono abbinate. Sì, magari uno lo ricorda bene, però con questo abbinamento qua uno se lo ricorda per sempre. Bene, bene. Uh, Sergio, I, you, I'm going to need your help a little bit because I'm only good for a couple sentences, but it's like I know you started talking about 2016 with its intensity and also 2010, and then he mentioned 2014, especially for its nose, the, the aromatics of the 2014 and, and the uh, intensity. So um, fill me in a little bit about some of the other things that he mentioned. I think uh, we are thankful to the global warming, as I told, uh, I think from 2000, uh, from, from 98, uh, If we skip the 2002, where it was a really bad vintage because we had a lot of hail, a lot of uh, crap broken by the storms, uh, we have uh, almost uh, more than 10 years, more, more than 20 years, with every vineyard with a very good, very, very, every vintage with a good potential, with different character, with different expression. I uh, really like 2008 for the power, for the finesse. I like 2012 for the elegance. I don't know why, maybe because I'm become older, but more and more I like more elegant wine than, power, than powerful. And 12 for me was the stereotype of the finesse in Barolo area. And was wine who very few people talk about when, when they was uh, big in the market. But now when we open at 12 Barolo, it is a fantastic surprise in terms of uh, pleasure and drinkability. And I think uh, the 18 will be almost in the same way. And uh, I like very much. And I understand that 19... 18. 18, right. 
And I understand that for 19 producers. I think, and I think yeah. I like very much. Yeah, the producers have told me throughout the long game that whatever grape you're working with, white, red, I, doesn't everything. I think uh, I don't like to say too early, but I think 19 <clears throat> will be comparable than uh, 13 and 16 for sure. Great. I Two. think it has a great potential. In the color is fantastic, the freshness, the finesse. The wine show really, really well. Great, that, that's good to hear. I, I can't wait to try those wines. After, uh, if you don't trust me, you can come in the cellar. You can, we can do a tour between the cast. No, 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 no. I trust. <laughs> I, jo I joked on it. No. I One last question. Uh, we didn't. I didn't mention the nascetta. We have about five minutes left. If you could talk about nascetta, which is a, a wonderful variety. Nascetta is a fantastic uh, <clears throat> gray variety just born in Barolo area. And we are thankful from uh, one producer from Novello who started uh, more than 20 years ago to try to make experiment with this great variety, to relive this variety. He did a lot of work. And now, thankfully to this producer of Novello, uh, we can have uh, the Nascetta grape authorized in Lange rule. We can call Lange uh, Nascetta, also in uh, our uh, area outside the Novello, is the yeah one of the two grey variety indigenous from uh, Barolo area. <clears throat> and Nascetta is uh, <clears throat> for me a very interesting grey variety because it's I call it differently white in terms of uh, uh, the expression is a uh, mineral. It is a uh, uh, salty. Uh, but uh, it doesn't have an explosion of aromas. Uh, but it's more in terms of uh, sweet herbal and uh, spice, uh, sweet spice. And for this reason, I, I decided to make the, the white making of this uh, grey variety different than classic uh, white, uh, white making in white, because I make the fermentation like a red wine with the fermentation on the skin. Uh, we do pumping over, uh, we, we do the same way making the uh, red wine, but it's a white grape and uh, he, we make uh, white wine. <clears throat> but after the fermentation in stainless steel, we uh, do aging for seven, eight months in amphora <clears throat> to give uh, some oxygen because uh, with maturation on the skin, we take some tanning and the tanning need oxygen. <clears throat> and this is uh, uh, what I like for this uh, kind of uh, grape to have a different expression than classic white wine. But it's very intriguing, very uh, funny to pair sometime also with ground food. I like uh, <clears> to <throat> appreciate uh, Marco uh, from the beginning. He believed in Nascetta. He have a different Nascetta in uh, his wine list because uh, it is terroir, it's Lange. It's a classic wine for Piedmont because Piedmont uh, Piedmontese food is uh, ground food, and nascetta is also good to, to pair with ground food. It's not a classic uh, white for fish. Right. And do, do you know where that name came from, how the grape was named? Because I know the word nasce in Italian means to, in, to be born. You know, it's, it's born. No, yeah, but uh, nobody know exactly the origin of the name. I asked for, to the, some friend from Novello, but nobody uh, have the answer. Okay. So it will remain a mystery. So, but remain a mystery. Okay, a mystery also. Yeah. So, just, hey Marco, grazie per l'opportunità. This was great, Marco. I we didn't meet the last time, but next time I'm there, I definitely will come with Sergio, and hopefully it's soon. For sure. Continue success with that, and Sergio, fingers crossed for a great harvest this year in 2020. Absolutely, we need it because 2020. We need some good news, not only. <laughs> and we all do. We all do. So. Yeah. But I, I appreciate your, your hospitality over the years and wow. welcoming me to the we, cellars and to Sierra Lunga and to, you know, visit. We are very thankful to you to make this uh, webinar. And for sure, you are invited uh, again to visit us. And we have to go to eat to drink some uh, other wine to Marco restaurant. And obviously, we hope that also many other American people can restart to come in Piedmont to enjoy our wine, our food, our atmosphere. Speriamo. Okay. Speriamo, sì. Okay. Buona giornata. Buon lavoro. Ciao, Tom. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao, Marco. Ciao.